Ron did not return to George Washington after that year. In 1933, 22-year-old L. Ron Hubbard married Mary Louise Grubb, or Polly, as everyone called her. That August, in Maryland, he discovered gold on his wife's farm in Maryland and sold a story to the Washington Star on Navy Pets. Things began a little, to get a little bit brighter for him in 1934 when he began to write for the pulps. At that time, there were about 150 of them, like Dime Detective and Dime Western. He also made some trips to New York and met a man by the name of Frank Gruber and began telling Gruber the tales of all of the adventures he had in his life. I was delighted when I read it, the comment that, that Gruber said. Gruber said to him one night, he was sitting there and Ron was telling him all these stories and he just looked at him and he said, Ron, you're 84, aren't you? I gathered that Ron wasn't too happy with that because he seemed to get a bit angry. And he said, what do you mean? And Gruber said, well, I just added up all the things that you did and it came to 84 years. <laughs> By 1938, he'd written many novels, novelettes, short stories, nonfiction, and his first hardback. He had two children and he was living in Bremerton, Washington. And in 1938, he wrote the book Excalibur. It was a tale of a king who asked all of the sages to gather all of the wisdom together and put it in 500 books. When they'd done that, they were to put it in 100 books. When they'd done that, they were to put it in one book. When they'd done that, one word. And that word was survive. The book didn't sell, however. <laughs> and he wrote to his wife, God was feeling sardonic the day he created the universe. So it's rather up to at least one man every few centuries to pop up and come just as close to making him swallow his laughter as possible. <coughs> By 1940, he fulfilled one dream. He became a member of the Explorers Club in New York. And he and Polly took their 30-foot catch up to Ketchikan in Alaska for vacation. In 1941, on the 19th of July, L. Ron Hubbard was commissioned Lieutenant J.G. in the U.S. Naval Reserve, Intelligence Volunteer Specialist. He was only to hold that title for a year, a little bit more. He requested sea duty and became a deck volunteer specialist. He finally did see sea duty in 1943 after he went to subchaser school. And he did a lot of traveling in the Navy, back and forth. Um, on the 18th of May, he took his subchaser out of Portland. And after being at sea five hours, there were radar blips. Ha ha, enemy subs. Well, at the end of the 68 hour battle, Hubbard's ship had been joined by two blimps, two Coast Guard cutters, two subchasers, and they all fought. And in the end, there was a report. And the report said that there was no evidence of submarines. Did say, however, that there was a magnetic deposit in the area. He was ordered back to Astoria and then took the subchaser to San Diego, but then got into more trouble. He went to the Los Coronados Islands which are Mexican property. And he had his men fire shots. And they fired shots and they fired rifles and they fired pistols. And I guess they upset the Mexican fishermen who used the islands to dry their nets. Because after that, Ron was strongly rep reprimanded. And in the report, it said that he, quote, is, quote, lacking essential qualities of judgment, leadership, cooperation. And they went on to say that we, quote, suggest a large vessel where he can be properly supervised. Soon after that, Ron became ill with a duodenal ulcer that kept him laid up for several months. 1944, 
finds Ron at the School of Military Government in Princeton. He also there, while he was there, uh, Robert Heinlein was there and as Isaac Asimov were there. They were trying to figure out what to do with kamikaze pilots. And I suppose Ron was willing to join in and add his opinion too. They never did find out what to do with kamikaze pilots, but Asimov remembers Ron as, and he spoke, that he spoke, quote, with perfect aplomb and in complete paragraphs. 1945, he went to Monterey and again became ill with an ulcer. He spent most of the remainder of the war in the hospital in Oakland with problems with his ulcer. He did have a month's leave. That month was probably August. And he came, of all places, to Pasadena on South Orange Avenue. Someone had introduced him to a fellow by the name of Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons was an explosives expert who had become very, very interested in the writings of Aleister Crowley. Now, Aleister Crowley is a Satanist. He was called the Beast 666. Crowley had been involved with the Golden Dawn, but they kicked him out. And so he formed his own organization, the Ordo Templi Orientis and practice sexual magic. And that was where Ron spent his month of leave in August of 1945, before going back to the hospital in Oakland. The war was over in se by September, and the 5th of December, L. Ron Hubbard was mustered out of the Navy. By this time, his wife Polly and their two children, a girl and a boy, were living in Bremerton, Washington, he didn't go there. He went straight to Pasadena. What a charming man he must have been. He wasn't there very long before Jack Parsons' lover was L. Ron Hubbard's lover. And they formed a corporation within a matter of a very short period of time. <laughs> Parsons' lover's name was Sarah Northrup. And soon after they formed the corporation, Ron and Sarah fled with the corporate funds. 